Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. One of the things I love about my game collection is that I'm constantly bouncing around between systems. One moment I'm playing the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, the next moment I'm on my Game Boy Advance. And then maybe I'm bouncing over to the Dreamcast or I guess now even the Steam Deck. But one system I always come back to is the Nintendo GameCube. Now you guys know I was not an early adopter of the system. I didn't own it until it was pretty much, I guess probably the Wii era. I got a, a, an old GameCube on Craigslist, but ever since then, I have loved going back and exploring its awesome library of games. And that's exactly what I did this week. So I'm gonna share with you in this video, the eight GameCube games that I still play all the time. Starting with Geist. So this is a very unique first person shooter that is exclusive to the GameCube. In this game, you play as a poltergeist, hence the name of the game, or basically a ghost, and you have the ability to possess both living and also inanimate objects. This game plays almost like an adventure game where you need to think your way out of most situations. For instance, living things can only be possessed when they are frightened, and you can tell that because they have a red halo around them. So for instance, in this scene right here, I need to possess this, I guess he's a guard, and you'll possess the ladder that's leaning over against the wall. And once you're inside of it, you are seeing the point of view of the ladder. It's kind of funny, but you basically tip it over, which startles the guard. Then you'll hop out of the ladder and fly across the room to possess the fire extinguisher. And then you can spray the guard, hence kind of elevating his, his level of being scared. Once he has that red halo, then you can possess him and continue on past the level, but you're inside of his body. So you have his appearance and also his weaponry. Another scenario has you possessing an engineer that has the ability to fix fuse boxes. He can operate computers and turrets and give you more access that you couldn't with say a guard. But it goes beyond that. For instance, you'll possess a dog, which will allow you to get past some of the guards. And then at a certain point, you'll possess rats, which will allow you to get access to holes that are in the wall. So you'll go behind the wall and get around some of like, say the force fields, things like that. This game is definitely not a looker and yeah, it feels very dated, but man, it's sure a blast to play. Speaking of which, actually one of the things that never gets old is when you will possess like say an exploding crate or grenade. Ah, oh, dude, that is just so much fun. So yeah, it's a very interesting game. It only came out on the GameCube and I totally dig it. Next up is a game that's not gonna be very surprising to many of you because I love arcade racing games and one of the best ones ever made is F-Zero GX. Now the F-Zero series has been around for a while, but I do think that this is probably my favorite one. It is insanely fast, as you can see by this footage here. I mean, it really pushes you as a gamer. You are almost afraid to blink while you are playing this game. I really love its great level design. It has crazy tight corners. I'm talking like 90 degree turns here where, man, you really have to pay attention when you are racing. Again, at these speeds, it's absolutely insane. And I have to say it works extremely well with a GameCube controller for some reason. I've tried playing this on emulation with, you know, a standard kind of Xbox style controller. And for some reason, it just doesn't feel quite the same. I don't know if that's just me or maybe my setup, but I do, I do recommend that if you're gonna try this game, try to play it on an actual GameCube with the real controller, because I do find it to be better than other solutions. It's a total shame and bummer that this is basically the last F-Zero made as of the making of this video. So Nintendo seems to have kind of forgotten about this franchise, but at the very least, it left the series on an extreme high note. This is a must play. Next up is a game called Baton Kaitos, Eternal Wings and the Lost Ocean. So this is a traditional Japanese RPG, but it has a fantastic battle system. So full disclosure, I typically don't like card-based battle systems, but for some reason, this game uses the cards in a way that just feels very approachable. Maybe it's, it's the way that it, it introduces it slowly to the player. It doesn't get overly complicated very quick. And so 
I guess I just feel like it has a very natural and gradual buildup of the card mechanic, which again, allows you to get into it, even if you aren't into these type of games. And that's good because I do think this is a fantastic JRPG. It's, it's a nice mix of old school where it's turn-based, but then you also have this ability to defend yourself against uh, incoming attacks from enemies. Throughout the game, you'll collect cards and build your deck, and you basically have attack cards, defense cards, and also modifier cards that will have some sort of elemental boost to it. So for instance, you'll have fire cards, water cards, uh, light cards, things like that, and they, they cancel each other out depending on what element they are. And so it's pretty standard stuff if you've ever played a JRPG in the past, but again, you're just using cards. And so during the attack phase, you choose the different types of weapons and their, basically their power ability, I guess that's what you call it, the little number in the upper right hand corner, and you try to make combos to try to do as much damage as possible. But then when you're attacked, you do have to in real time, very quickly try to select a card that has a defense mechanism. And if you can do that correctly, then you'll take less damage. Plus the combat, as you can see, is very fast. It's lively, it's colorful, it's full of really cool animations. It's just a beautiful game. And it only came out on the GameCube. And so every time I hook up my GameCube and I'm in the mood to dive into a deep JRPG, this is my first choice, always. Next up is a game that I think would be on a lot of people's list. It's a fantastic one that of course is the original Metroid Prime. I love this game. Nintendo did the nearly impossible thing here. They took a beloved 2D platforming franchise and turned it into a first person game. That is very difficult to do and they could have screwed it up a number of ways, but they did a great job making that transition. It's way better than I think a lot of people, myself included, expected it to turn out. One criticism of this game is that it has a pretty unorthodox and sort of unnatural feeling control system, at least for the time. And I'm very glad that they stuck to it because essentially what this game is all about is locking onto your enemies and strafing. But the way that they've done it in here, it's it just feels unlike any other first person shooter you've ever played. And so thankfully the first level of this game does a very good job kind of introducing you to that control scheme. And so once you've played it for about say five or 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, you start feeling like you've got the hang of it. All the elements of classic Metroid are here, but just in the first person. So for instance, you you will have a, a level where you can't necessarily progress until you get a weapon upgrade and then that will unlock other parts of it. Um, even down to the save rooms, which can be kind of annoying and again, very old school, but it's just part of the gig, man. If you're gonna be playing a Metroid game, there is gonna be that sort of risk versus reward there. And probably the last criticism I have of this game is that the platforming in first person can be kind of annoying. It can be kind of hard to judge how far you need to jump sometimes. And so that's a little frustrating, but overall, this is just a joy to explore. The worlds and levels are excellent in this game. And I think it's an absolute masterpiece. I've said it before, I can't wait for there to be another Metroid Prime 4 game coming to the Switch sometime. That's gonna be awesome. Oh yeah, baby, another one of my all-time favorites on the GameCube is Eternal Darkness. I mentioned how I picked up a GameCube off of Craigslist and this was one of the games that was included with it. I hadn't ever heard of it before. I sat down and played it and was blown away. This is a survival horror masterpiece. Now I'm not gonna give away too much of the story here because that is part of the fun of this game. But some things I wanna tell you about is that basically this does start in the modern era in a classic uh, older mansion sort of style, maybe feeling a little bit like Resident Evil, but then it very quickly changes. It starts jumping through time and you start controlling characters through time, telling this massively sweeping story. It's super cool. And it feels very Lovecraftian. So if you like Lovecraft and his really kind of weird stories, kind of larger than life, you're gonna love this, all the way down to the point where it actually has a sanity meter in this game, where if you get too freaked out, 
the game starts messing with you. And I'm not gonna reveal the ways that it does it, but it's one of the coolest parts of this game that you'll just be playing along with it and then suddenly things go weird and it's so much fun. One of my favorite parts of this game is the ability to, in combat, target different parts of the body. So you can target the head, the torso, the arms and the legs, which gives combat a bit of strategy. So for instance, here you see that I have a sword and I hack off the head, but these, these skeletons are still a threat because they have arms. And so I can, I can target the arms, hack those off, and then it's pretty much done. A lot of combat in this game does revolve around that. And again, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's a pretty cool feature. This is a survival horror game that I think is perfect for some sort of HD remaster or remake of some kind. You know, we get a lot of the Resident Evils, which are great, but this is one I think that I would, I just love for the, the publisher, developer, somebody to take on and just, just update this game for a new generation, a new audience. It's, it's fantastic. When you look at top five Star Wars games of all time, often this game is included in there. It's really great. This is Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2, and this was actually a launch title in North America for the GameCube. Basically, this is an arcade flight shooting game, and it's a best of the original trilogy, the ones from the 70s and 80s. So I guess episode four, five, and six, which, you know, those are the ones that are close to my heart. What I like about this game, it's very pick up and play. If you want to just hop into an X-Wing and blow away a bunch of TIE fighters over the Death Star or visit other locations of those classic movies and just shoot some bad guys, this is the game for you. And I like how you can give orders to your wingmen using the D-pad, which reminds me very much of, say, classic Wing Commander. And I have to say, it still holds up today. It looks fantastic. And in many ways, I feel like other Star Wars games that have this space combat are simply just copying what was already done way back on the GameCube. And so while it's not necessarily the deepest Star Wars game, and maybe it doesn't have all the variety that a modern Star Wars game would have, for me, if I'm hooking up the GameCube and I want to just jump in and have some fun, blow some stuff up, this is the one I go to. Next up is a game called Gotcha Force. You know, often when I go back to the GameCube, I'm looking for something that is basically, one, exclusive to the console, right? I can't play it anywhere else. And two, I do like pick up and play, you know? I'm not looking for something that's gonna necessarily take me weeks or months to get through. Maybe I just have an hour or so and I just wanna jump in and have some quick fun. Well, Gotcha Force is that game. Think of this as a mech fighting game that has a bit of Pokemon collecting in it. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the number is, but I know this game has anywhere from 200 to 300 of these Borgs. That's what they call these little palm-sized mechs that basically came from another planet to the Earth, and then you as a human, you collect them, upgrade, build them, and then you'll take on other Borgs and other owners. And so, yeah, I called it pick up and play, and it is because the battles can be very short, but the collecting aspect of this is where you can sink a lot of time into it if you want. And the cool thing is these little mechs that you collect, of which there are hundreds, they're all slightly different. They'll have different stats, different weapons, and you, you will play the game very differently depending on the ones that you, you outfit and go into battle with. Now, you can't mention this game without talking about how kind of collectible it is. When it comes to the GameCube, this is one of the more expensive games out there. It's wild to me because I bought this game for $35 at a time when that was expensive for GameCube games because most GameCube games at the time when I bought this were maybe $8. Nobody cared, but nowadays this game is stupidly expensive. And for that reason, it would be awesome if Capcom would reboot this game for the Switch. I think it would do extremely well there, both from the collecting aspect of the game, to trading, to doing battles online. I, it just feels like it was made for it. But until then, you gotta play it on the GameCube, and that's what I do. Next up is Kirby Air Ride. And this one is probably a little bit controversial because this is unlike any other Kirby game out there, and I think that's why it's kind of fun and unique. 
Basically, this is an arcade racing game at its core. It feels like a mix of, say, Mario Kart and Wipeout. What makes this game kind of unique is that you don't have to push a button to accelerate. It auto accelerates you down the track. And essentially what you do in this game is your A button, you hold that down to pivot so you can basically go around corners, pivot on the A button, and then you'll boost off in the direction that you're facing. You'll also tap that A button to have Kirby swallow up enemies and absorb their powers, as well as use that power to potentially take out other racers on the track. And that's what makes this game kind of fun because it is very approachable, very simple to play, but very difficult to master because there is some serious challenge here and it gets very chaotic. And what's cool is that it goes beyond the main game here. So it has two other modes that are also really fun in their own right. For instance, you have Top Ride, which is a top-down view game, very similar to those old arcade games like Sprint. And like those games, it's only on one screen and you're controlling Kirby. So a very simple kind of game, but it controls really well. This is actually more fun than it probably looks. And then the other mode is City Trial, which is an open level free for all. This is great for couch multiplayer games with other people just going at it in this open world, taking in different power-ups, jumping on different vehicles, and just beating the tar out of each other. It's super fun. This is definitely not my favorite Kirby game, not by a long shot, but it is fun and it's exclusive to the GameCube. So it always gets a play whenever I have my GameCube hooked up and I'm, I'm just in the mood for it. So anyways, guys, that is eight GameCube games that I still play all the time. Such a fantastic console. I could have easily mentioned many more first party exclusives and also third party games. Probably should have mentioned Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes, as well as Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, two, two more games that are awesome as well. But I would love to know if you are still playing GameCube games today and which ones those are. Let me know down in the comments below. And as always guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing and take care.